All right, and we are back for episode three of our series on animating with Unity. Uh, so far, we've just given a sort of an intro. We've talked about installing the Unity Hub in the editor. Uh, we're using, I'll just remind anyone who maybe skipped the previous video, we're going to be using Unity 20, 2022.1. So please install that if you haven't done that already. Um, now, what we're going to do uh, in this one is we're going to start by watching something that Nate created. So Nate, do you want to set up this video for us just a little? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, as an animator, I just love making stuff. And we had this really fun uh, character that my friend Brad had modeled. Uh, and um, I just kind of wanted to explore what this character is. And I was thinking, you know, he's kind of a cartoony transformer looking guy. So what if he's like a nice transformer? I'm Canadian. So to me, I feel like, what would a Canadian transformer look like? You know, and this, this story is about a robot who doesn't want to be a destructive uh, kill bot anymore. So he's called a big friendly kill bot. So yeah. Okay, That's cool. It. Let's roll it. Oops. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think, oh, I think I've stepped on someone's car. Oh, I should, I should leave. And there you have it. <laughs> well done, Nate. So tell us just a bit about the making of this video. How many people were involved? Kind of what, what went into doing this? I'm just going to share a little bit here on my screen. Great. Awesome. Oops. So the credits here, like my friend uh, Cody uh, was the concept artist, illustrator, designed the character. Um, I have a group of artist friends, you know, that like to help out on these projects. So I just want to make sure I give them good credit here. And uh, my friend Brad uh, is the modeler texture artist here. He did an awesome job actually bringing those concepts to life. Uh, Delano, he is an uh, awesome rigger and he rigged this thing up, meaning he put joints and controls into the 3D mesh so that I could animate it. Uh, and Thomas did an awesome job on the simulations in the scene, which is an uh, awesome part that we could um, include into this animation. Um, so we did this all in our free time. So this is three artists, but obviously there is five. Uh, so I gotta correct that old slide. Um, and we were all working remotely, which is the fun, flexibility of this type of work is that we can live anywhere and, and do anything. Uh, and we did it in like two months worth of uh, evenings and weekends, you know, uh, you, and just I discussed, free time. you and I discussed that, right? And it's not, it's two months of calendar time. How much like if you were like thinking full time working time, like what were you? Yeah, like asset aside, like asset modeling, I'm not too sure how long that took. That's normal production stuff, but the actual animation unity stuff was probably about seven days worth of work to actually animate them, get the shots in, and final render out of Unity. So like a full week of, sure. of an artist's time. OK. Yeah. And I would love to take it further, but this is just a, a hobby project. And it's it's at some point, you just got to take it away you know, and just put it out there. So yeah. OK, cool. Um, and the the, asset, the the budget, we spent 400 bucks on just like asset store stuff. Uh, I used Kitbash, which is a company that does really nice high-end like models for cities. And, and that's whatever. mostly like the buildings, the cars, the kind of general stuff around the state, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like set decoration stuff. Yeah. Um, these are yeah. things that you could model if you want, but um, for time reasons, and even it's, 400 bucks is a lot for some people, but for... For this type of project, I felt like that was a worthy investment that I can reuse those assets later on down the road. Cool. So, and I can't model. I can't model at all. So, <laughs> so in this series, we're not really going to talk too much about what happens outside of Unity. Uh, it, this is much more of a series about what happens in Unity. But we wanted to take a, a chunk of this video to talk about what happens outside because yeah. it's not like you're going to do everything in it. So why don't you walk us through a bit of that process of like getting uh you know getting that model in and what you had to do so a lot of this uh workflow before you get to unity is the same as it would be in any type of animated production so if you're used to working in any other offline way or or however you like uh a lot of that production stuff doesn't really change so unity doesn't really offer any type of value there it's just once you get into unity that's where the value comes in 
Um, and so my friend Cody designed the, mo the monster, the robot here, which I think is a really awesome design. I love the line work and the proportions and stuff. It's so cool. Um, and then my friend Brad started going in there and modeling it and bringing that 2D asset to life in 3D. Uh, and again, if you've worked in any 3D animation before, this is the same process you would normally go through. Uh, and we started to um, rig it up, uh, which means, like I said before, inserting joints uh, and control objects for us to manipulate in Maya. Uh, and this is a little bit different than normal because you, if you're transferring uh, um, animation from Maya or Blender or wherever into Unity or any other game engine in general, you need to make sure there's no Maya deformers. It's pretty much just joints, geometry, blend shapes. That's pretty much all that can come through. So design your rig accordingly to that so, and again like you're saying you, you you did this in maya but uh, if if the person watching this is a blender user or they have some other dcc they like that they, they could work with that as well absolutely and um, i feel like the the process is very similar it's just different programs to get you there yeah and you've also noted in the uh notes here that you're sharing on plastic but maybe you're into git or you're into perforce or whatever so those you can yeah. use whatever version control uh but I do heavily encourage people to use version control. It's a real, real pain to lose your work if you're not backing things up with version control. Totally. Yeah. And, and plastic is awesome. It works great with Unity. And I think you get five gigs free. So yeah, a little plug for plastic there. There you go. Um, all right. So as an animator, this is a little bit high level stuff. If you're an animator watching this, you already know all this. So forgive me. Uh, is you want to um, collect as much reference as possible. This is just a clip from YouTube that I pulled in of a guy doing some parkour. Um, I'll play it quickly. Beautiful. That looks painful and I would die doing that. So I recommend going on YouTube to find your reference uh, for extreme stunts like this. Um, when I worked in animation production for film and stuff, uh, if I had a good reference, the shot would always come together so much faster. So I really encourage all animators um, just to really reference everything. So um, you can film it, use YouTube, whatever you need. And um, this has nothing to do with Unity. It's just good advice <laughs> for uh, animation production. So you can see in my uh, big friendly kill bots, the move that he makes is very similar to what this guy does here. And it's just a GIF I recorded of my scene with the reference in the scene in Maya, which I feel like is a really important step so that you can make sure that you get the same kind of poses and timing um, as you need, as, as the person would do in real life, so that your animation starts to feel realistic uh, and feel like it actually belongs in the world. Um, there is a step, though, because this is a giant robot where you need to separate from the reference just because of the scale, right? And actually, I feel like in hindsight, I should have made this robot move a bit slower just to kind of get that sort of scale really nailed down and, and feeling right. You're your own harshest critic, Nate. That's true. That's true. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have Dive into Unity next. I think that's pretty much all of the... Oh, sorry. I should probably talk a little bit about exporting. Um, once your animation is complete, it's really important that we select all the attributes of that character that you want to export. And I just use export as an uh, FBX. So in, in Maya, you just click on File, Export FBX, uh, and make sure you have the animation checked off, like fake animation. And that's pretty much it. You name it, and you bring it into Unity, which we'll stop, talk about next. OK, so we have now uh, something that's been modeled, something that's got animations on it. We're bringing all this over to Unity. So in the next video, we're going to set up our Unity project, and we're really going to start getting to work. Great. That's right. Thanks, Nate. Thank you.